Understanding Wi-Fi bands is vital to understanding when to use 20 megahertz versus 40 megahertz versus 80 megahertz channel widths. It's also an important prerequisite to understanding Wi-Fi channels and channel width. The two main Wi-Fi bands are 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz. These Wi-Fi bands are then split into channels for wireless devices to communicate on. The 2.4 gigahertz band covers a 100 megahertz range of 2,400 to 2,500 megahertz. The 2.4 gigahertz band is split into 14 discrete channels that are 20 megahertz each. There are 14 channels in the 2.4 band. Note that channels 1, 6, 11, and 14 do not overlap. If you do the math, you'll quickly see that 14 bands of the 20 megahertz equals 180 megahertz. This is greater than the 100 megahertz size of the 2.4 band, which means that channels overlap. This is important because overlapping Wi-Fi channels can interfere with one another. Due to varying regulations, not all channels are available for use in all locations. For example, only 11 channels are available in the United States. The 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi band covers a 150 megahertz range from 5.725 to 5.875 gigahertz. However, an additional range of UNII bands widens that range to 750 megahertz. Using 20 megahertz, there are 24 non-overlapping channels available within the 5 gigahertz band. This is also a generalization, and available channels may vary depending on location and channel size. 2.4 versus 5 gigahertz, popularity, interference, throughput, and range. 2.4 is more popular than 5 gigahertz at the moment, but both are widely used. 2.4 is cheaper to implement than 5 gigahertz, so manufacturers use it to save costs. 2.4 has also been widely used for a longer period of time, so more 2.4 devices have been deployed. This popularity does have a downside, though. The prevalence of 2.4 devices and limited number of non-overlapping channels with 2.4 gigahertz can make network congestion issues worse. Many consumer devices use 2.4 gigahertz frequency bands. As a result, 2.4 bands are more likely to experience interference. The relative abundance of non-overlapping channels on a 5 GHz Wi-Fi makes it less susceptible to interference. 2.4 GHz versus 5 GHz. Which to use? In most cases, you should use 2.4 to optimize for distance and 5 to optimize for speed. But there is a trade-off between increased performance and range of coverage. 5 GHz can carry more bandwidth so its upload and download speeds can be faster. But remember, you get what you pay for. It also benefits from more non-overlapping channels and less interference, which can boost performance. However, 5 GHz isn't as good as going through walls. You should use 5 GHz when gaming or 4K video streaming, but keep your gaming console close to the router. 2.4 GHz goes further. The lower frequency of 2.4 GHz is better at passing through solid objects and can cover a wider range than 5 GHz. You should use 2.4 GHz if your Wi-Fi clients and router or access point might be separated by multiple rooms. 2.4 GHz will do a better job of penetrating walls and objects between your Wi-Fi devices. You can use both. It's also worth keeping in mind that simultaneous dual-band routers can broadcast 2.4 and 5 GHz at the same time. This allows you to use 2.4 GHz for some devices and 5 GHz for others, and can provide more flexibility. If the 2.4 and 5 GHz networks use the same SSID, or name, wireless devices can automatically connect to their preferred bandwidth. In short, simultaneous dual-band routers and modern smart devices can automatically do a lot of the work for you. 20 megahertz and 40 megahertz. What's the difference? When dealing with Wi-Fi, channel widths are usually measured in megahertz. 20 megahertz was the norm and the only option for channel width in 802.11a and 802.11g Wi-Fi. The 802.11n standard introduced channel bonding, which enabled 40 megahertz widths. 802.11ac further extended bonding to allow for 80 and 160 MHz channels. 
Bonding channels increases throughput, which can improve performance. Thus, the difference between 20 and 40 megahertz is throughput. 40 megahertz has higher throughput than the 20 megahertz channel, thanks to channel bonding. But there are downsides to channel bonding. While 40 megahertz might have higher throughput than 20 megahertz, it also reduces the number of non-overlapping channels. This increases the probability for interference. Not all Wi-Fi client devices support channels other than 20 megahertz, so compatibility can be a concern. A note on marketing lingo and, and tech talk. Uh, 20 megahertz Wi-Fi channels are generally referred to as narrow channels or narrow widths, and 40, 80, and 160 megahertz Wi-Fi channels are labeled as wide channels or wide widths. If you're looking to get your IT career started or just want to browse around our library, sign up for a free CBT Nuggets trial. Explore our courses, take practice exams, and get studying for your certifications. Thanks for watching.